Welcome to New Possibilities. I speak truth to power without fear. So as many of you know, uh, there was a protest in D.C. You had these Trump supporters actually invade the Capitol, um, invade the Senate, and actually occupy the Senate. They smashed windows. They destroyed property. They actually went into members of Congress's offices. It was a complete spectacle. One person was shot and killed, and three other people died uh, from medical-related issues. And all of this was prompted by Donald Trump. He actually urged his supporters to take the Capitol, to march on the Capitol. Um, he said, you will never take back our country with weakness. So Donald Trump encouraged this foolishness. And you had many people there, um, you know, all of them had those flags, those Donald Trump flags and Donald Trump hats, a lot of them, you know, those Make America Great Again hats. These were Trump supporters, and many of them had Confederate symbols. One was in the halls of Congress with a Confederate flag, and somebody actually erected a noose on the grounds of the Capitol. And we know that a noose uh, symbolizes death. You know, it's, uh, it's a racist symbol as well. We know that many of our people were lynched um, by white supremacists. And many of these people that participated in this demonstration were white supremacists. Now, the president, while this stuff was going on, while these people were invading the Capitol, you know, climbing barriers and taking down barriers and all that kind of stuff, engaging in lawless behavior, Donald Trump referred to these people as special. He said, you're very special in this particular speech where he addressed the issue. Now, he eventually told them to, you know, that they should go home and all that kind of stuff. But that's nothing. That That is nothing, uh, especially after all these weeks where he's been egging these people on, encouraging these people, feeding them all these lies about voter fraud and, um, you know, corruption and all that kind of stuff when he is the one who was actually trying to engage in voter fraud. Uh, so this is the situation you have. Now... Eventually, the police were able to gain control over the situation. Um, they were able to drive these people out. There were um, 52 arrests uh, during this whole incident. 14 police officers were injured. Now, Donald Trump is a man who has been talking about law and order and all that kind of stuff. He campaigned on law and order. He campaigned on criticizing the Democrats for not doing enough to control protests and all that kind of stuff, for encouraging chaos, when he is the one who has encouraged chaos. He's encouraged these people to engage in this type of activity. And we cannot forget this, that this is not the first time that he has done something like this. We all remember Charlottesville. We remember how this man talked about how there were some very fine people there. This is a part of a pattern with this man. So you had these people actually attack an institution of the government, you know, one of the branches of the government. This was, for all intents and purposes, um, as many people have said, an insurrection. You know, this man is uh, inspiring people to engage in treason, um, all to soothe and satisfy his ego. Uh, you know, he campaigned on America first, but he didn't care. It's really about him first, him over his country, him over democracy. He doesn't care about democracy because if he cared about democracy, he would have um, conceded. He would have recognized the will of the people when they voted for Joe Biden. And so the police eventually gained control over this whole thing. Um, they drove out these these protesters from the Capitol. Uh, and the thing is, this was a frightening situation. You know, many of the members of Congress had to go to an undisclosed location during this whole incident. And it reminded me, you know, as I said on Facebook, it reminded me of The Handmaiden's Tale, had how you had these right-wing extremists actually take over the government. And one thing that has to be pointed out, I mean, one of the things that made this thing less volatile is the fact that D.C. has... Uh, a lot of restrictions on gun ownership. Now, D.C. was an open carry state or something like that. 
this situation could have been much worse. It could have been much worse. So after this protest was put under control, early this morning, uh, Congress uh, confirmed Joe Biden's victory. Uh, they confirmed the vote of the Electoral College. So Joe Biden, without a doubt, as many of us already knew, will be uh, the president of the United States. Thank goodness that we no longer have to deal with a narcissist like Donald Trump. Thank goodness that we no longer have to deal with somebody that's so incompetent like Donald Trump. I am glad that he is leaving. Now, you know, eventually the police were able to gain control. And then, you know, again, this points to hypocrisy. Like Donald Trump, when you had those uh, Black Lives Matter protesters in D.C., this man was talking about the need for law and order. This man brought in federal troops based, not federal troops, but federal law enforcement people to uh, clamp down and to be overly aggressive with the crowd and all that kind of stuff so that he could take a photo op. But he didn't have that same call for law and order when his supporters stormed the Capitol. It seems like law and order only applies to black people and people that are progressive and on the left. So, so uh, you know, thank goodness that, you know, this is behind us for now. You know, I don't know, like as many of the commentators have said, like if this will just be the beginning of a lot of conflict and turmoil in the United States or if this is like the end of it. Because, um, you know, we saw what happened when Obama was elected. We saw this, this Tea Party emerge and this Tea Party morphed into what we see now with this, this Trump, uh, Trumpism and all that kind of stuff. Who's to say that there won't be acts of terrorism inspired by these people that they have labeled as patriots and stuff? But so there are several things that I want to talk about in response to this whole situation. And the first thing that comes to mind, as I alluded to earlier, is just the difference in the way the police responded to these different protests. The, it seemed like the police were hands off with this, even though they arrested, you know, quite a few people. It seems like they were nowhere near as aggressive as they would have been if these were black people engaging in the same activity. Uh, there's no way that they would allow black people to storm the Capitol. I mean, where was the security? How did this stuff happen? How were these people able to climb all those barricades and all that kind of stuff? Uh, you have one section, you know, one picture where these people are literally scaling a wall. How is that allowed to happen? And I've seen pictures on social media where they had all these federal uh, law enforcement people lined up on the steps of the Capitol to make sure that nothing would happen. But they didn't have that same kind of presence during this whole thing involving the, these Trump supporters. Uh, so it's just a complete difference in the response of these police. They would have aggressively clamped down if that was a Black Lives Matter demonstration or if those were Black Lives Matter, um, you know, protesters or, uh, you know, black protesters, period. They would have clamped down much harder than they did during this particular thing. Um, so that was one of the things that I thought, like many of us were saying, like, where are the police? Where are the arrests? Even though there were arrests, uh, it seemed like there were not nearly enough arrests. And I hope that they use the video footage of those people that invaded the Capitol to arrest them, to issue warrants for their arrest, because this is despicable what they did. You know, invading the... Uh, and the thing that makes this whole thing despicable, you know, even more so than the damage of property and stuff like that, is what they were actually protesting for. These people are um, trying to undermine democracy. That's what they're doing. And I'll, I'll get into that a l little bit more later. Um, the thing that's really sickening about this is that you have the president of the United States encouraging this stuff encouraging this kind of behavior, as I mentioned earlier. His actions were irresponsible, they were reckless, and they showed a complete disrespect for the American people and American values in the U.S. Constitution. Because here you had an election. There is no evidence of fraud, um, despite everything that this man is saying. 
This man has had his opportunity to prove that there was voter fraud. He filed all these frivolous lawsuits in all these courts, and the courts dismissed those lawsuits. He pleaded with elected officials, you know, like the or appointed officials, like the Secretary of States in different places. And they looked at the evidence and they found no voter fraud that this guy is complaining about. And many of these judges that ruled on these cases are Republican. So this is not a situation, it's just some partisan effort to prevent him from being elected. You know, this was objective. You had uh, Republican judges on the bench, judges that he appointed that ruled against him. Many of those judges were on the Supreme Court, are on the Supreme Court. They rejected his effort to disenfranchise voters. Um, so this man is irresponsible by spreading all this false information about voter fraud. Irresponsible, and basically what he was trying to do is disenfranchise not only black voters, but all Democratic voters, all the people that voted for Joe Biden. He was trying to disenfranchise them um, by encouraging this ridiculous spectacle that resulted in the loss of life. This man literally has blood on his hands. He is a disgrace to the nation, and he should resign. He really should. Even though it's a little bit of time left, that man should resign. He's not worthy to be president of the United States. He is a sp disgrace. He will go down in history as one of the most uh, disgraceful presidents this country has ever had. Um, so, you know, the thing, you know, the thing that really makes us super horrible is that he's trying to undermine democracy as I pointed out. Now, after, you know, Congress certified and confirmed Joe Biden's um, uh, victory in the election, this is what Donald Trump had to say. He said, even though I totally disagree with the outcome of the election and the facts bear me out, nevertheless, there will be an orderly transition. Now, I already talked about how the facts don't bear this guy out. You know, you got Republicans that pointed this out. You got Republican uh, Secretary of State that laid out the point, point by point, point, debunked all this nonsense that he's saying. So this stuff about facts bearing him out is total BS. Um, and when he talks about an orderly transition, we got to understand that this man has been, for the longest time, has been denying the Biden um, team access to vital information, vital um, information uh, regarding COVID, you know, a, a virus that is destroying the lives of many people. Many of us know people who have uh, contracted uh, COVID. Some of us know people who have died from it. Over 300,000 people in America have died from that virus. But yet this man has still downplayed the significance of it, you know, said the numbers were not real and all that kind of stuff, promoting this nonsense. And many of those people at his demonstration, they don't wear, they're not wearing masks. So a lot of those people that go to these demonstrations and rallies and stuff like that, many of them are going to get COVID. But that's beside the point. But at a time when we need to have... Uh, make sure that the next administration has all the information that they need so they can begin to plan to effectively combat this virus. This man, uh, based on his own pettiness, based on his own narcissism, refused to provide all this information to the, the Biden team. And then when you look at what has happened with the Russians hacking into America's uh, uh, cyber systems and all that kind of stuff, uh, he didn't pass on all the information that the Biden team needs to address that. And, and you look at the heightened uh, tensions with Iran. You know, the, the Biden team needs to have all that vital information about what's going on so they can plan accordingly. But this man, in his pettiness, in his triflingness, in his, uh, you know, his incompetence, has and, uh, just outright... Uh, self-centered self-centered attitude has refused to pass this information on 
to the Biden team. And this just shows you that he doesn't give a damn about the country. It's all about him. It's all about Trump first, not America first. It's not about making America great. It's about making his, himself, himself great. That's what it's about. And you had many people uh, refer to these, these protesters as patriots and stuff like that calling them patriots. There's nothing patriotic, patriotic about trying to undermine democracy. There's nothing patriotic about trying to disenfranchise millions of voters in this country. And that's what these people were in fact trying to do. They were trying to overturn the actual results of an election where millions upon millions of people voted. That's what they were trying to do. There is nothing patriotic about attacking American institutions. By attacking, there's nothing patriotic about invading the U.S. Senate. There's nothing at all patriotic about that. There's nothing patriotic about uh, using racist symbols like the Confederate flag during your demonstration. There's nothing patriotic or great about using nooses as symbols of your protests. Nothing at all patriotic about this. You know, the fact of the matter is, these people were terrorizing. Um, you know, they were engaged in terroristic type of activity. They were engaging in thuggery. And they were engaging in treasonous type of activity against the United States. No different from those Confederates that started a civil war in this country. Uh, they're despicable. And it shows you just how gullible um, people are and how easily controlled some people are because here you have despite all the evidence that this man Donald Trump is making up lies about voter fraud uh, despite all this stuff these people blindly follow this man he is in fact like a cult leader that's what he is and his followers are no different from cult followers So you had the situation where lives were lost because of Donald Trump. And again, that man should resign. He's not worthy to be president of the United States. So those are my thoughts about this situation. I just hope it doesn't spiral out of control and, you know, more of these types of things happen on the state and local level. We know about Trump supporters who, and another thing that I forgot to mention about this demonstration, these protesters, so-called protesters, actually planted bombs in the nation's capital. That's not political protest. That's an act of terrorism, and it needs to be condemned as such. So this is what we're dealing with. I just hope that these people don't engage in this activity around the country. Again, we saw what happened in Michigan where you had some of these Trump supporters actually plan to kidnap the governor of Michigan. You saw those armed protests at capitals around the country encouraged by Donald Trump to protest against COVID restrictions and all that kind of stuff. I just hope that these people um, stop you know, I hope that this is not going to be escalated and more of these protests occur. Uh, I hope that they have gotten the message that they lost. You lost the election. Donald Trump lost. He is not going to be president. And they need to face that reality. So with that, peace and blessings to each and every one of you. Please rate, comment, subscribe, like the video, share the video. Hit that notification bell so that you'll know when I post new content on here. Peace and blessings. Have a great day.